so I'm hiking the Prospect Mountain Trail, which is uh, very close to my house. I actually featured this trail in a video I did uh, quite a few videos ago. Creepy Part 1 and 2 was filmed uh, here. I don't come here that often for the fact that I do find it a little creepy. Um, but I just, I don't know, something wanted me to come here today. Okay, so this I can't remember how I've crossed before. I don't think there's a bridge under this. Nope, definitely not a bridge under that. Um, I'm going to have to find some rocks here to cross this. Okay, that went well. And we proceed. So far this is really cool because I really feel like I'm exploring out here because there had there is no footprints except for the deer prints that I'm following right now. So this is where the trail splits. Um, yellow to the peak or blue to the peak. And I can't recall which way I typically go. I think I go this way and then I come down that way. It's strange because there's tracks here. But they're, unless it's somebody who's come in a different way, which is possible, or they're not human tracks. Oh no, that's a snowshoe track. Somebody snowshoed through here. When I was changing my batteries, I was listening, I was noticing how quiet these woods are. But also one of the reasons why I've called, I've referred to it as creepy in the past is because although it's quiet, there's always, there's always noises. There's always branches breaking or things falling or which more so than any other woods that I seem to be in. If you came here at night, which I have wanted to do a night hike here, um, I think that would totally add to the, the creepies. You do have to be careful when you're following snow tracks uh, and not really paying attention to the blazes because you can easily start to follow up an animal path. A lot of times animals will follow the human path for a bit and then divert off. And I remember when I brought this up with Matt Jobin in one of our videos, I think Conversation Catwalk it was called, uh, he actually admitted to doing that himself because you can, and this is a good example of it. So the trail goes up that way, but there's another, what looks like footprints, um, but they're not, they're not people prints, they're deer tracks. So if you weren't really paying attention, you could kind of come to this, think it's a Y, start following the deer track and then find yourself in some den, which might be kind of cool, but it might be kind of cool to follow those. Big thanks to Mr. Snowshoe Guy because he helped me out back there. I would not, I was having trouble seeing where the, the uh, path was going. It looked like a brook, but actually that is the path. Wow, this is great. They cleared some trees um, since I was here in the fall. You were not able to see that view. All the trees had grown up and you can see the, the stumps down below. They must have cleared them this, this past fall. And it just, it opens up the view because before the only view you had was here. They provide a little bench here for you. Um, it was only that small opening in the trees. This is where I might mess up because I'm still following these snowshoe guys trails, but I just remembered that there's houses over here. And that guy, if you remember, I didn't see the tracks on the way in from the, from the section from my car to the main trail. So I knew at some point I was gonna see that this person must have turned off somewhere. And so I suspect he probably lives in one of those houses. So now I have to back up because I don't know if I'm on the trail that gets me back. Shoot, it splits here. Which way did I go? I think I went this way. Um, I don't know if this 
heads me back to the car or if this goes up to the guy's back door. So I'm turning around so that I can find the yellow, the last yellow blaze. Good thing I turned around. That's exactly the case. That's where I came from. That's where I was heading. And that's where the yellow trail goes. So I would have headed right into that guy's backyard. I'm back. I'm back to that point on the trail where it split. And actually that's what I did. So I, if you remember when I came in, I went to the left and I followed the, the blue trail to the peak. And then when I got to the peak, I followed the yellow down. So it made a nice little circle. It's a nice little hike. And I think it took me, maybe I want to say an hour and a half. I want to say it, it took me an hour and a half. And I stopped a lot because I take a lot of pictures and I explore. I'm back here at the brook. So pretty, sounds so pretty. I'm gonna leap this again. Actually, I don't think I have to make that big of a leap. I'm gonna go one, two, good. I'm good.